Okay, yesterday we talked about trigonometric identities. Today we're actually going to verify them. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do because I get tired of checking my answers in the back of the book and I don't have to do that because the answer is right in front of you. All you're doing is putting the pieces of the puzzle together to um, make sure that the equation is an identity. Remember an identity is one where we're trying to prove uh, that both sides of our equation are equal. Okay? As it says right here, we are trying to prove that both sides of the equation are equal for all values of the variable. Okay? So we're going to do several problems together to um, just give you some strategies and help make this process easier for you. So first off, uh, one of the strategies that got me through was to begin on the side with the more complicated expression working towards the less complicated. So, when you look at your sides, okay, we have secant squared plus cotangent squared minus 1 equals cotangent squared. Alright, and remember we have all the identities that we just talked about uh, yesterday in 5.1. So, looking at this, hopefully you can see that this side is more complicated than that. So I am going to look at this. I've got secant squared times cotangent squared. And <clears throat> I, you can look at it by itself, but what I'm going to do in case some people are not aware, secant squared is 1 over the cosine squared of theta. Cotangent is cosine squared over sine squared of theta minus 1. Okay? So when I'm multiplying two of them, I can simplify my fractions. So I'm left with 1 over the sine squared. And 1 over the sine squared is cosecant squared of theta. And from our Pythagorean identities that we talked about in 5.1, co cosecant squared theta minus 1 equals cotangent squared theta. So once you have gotten one side down to the other, then we write both sides together and put a check mark. Um, just to review real quick, because some people might not have it in front of them, we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If I divide everything by sine, sine over sine is 1. Cosine over sine is cotangent. And 1 over sine is cosecant. Okay, that's where that came from. If I took the 1 to the other side, cosecant squared of theta minus 1 is the cotangent squared. And then if I take that original one and divide by cosine, sine over cosine is tangent squared, cosine over cosine is 1, and 1 over cosine is secant squared. So those are my main trig identities that I'm going to refer to a lot besides our normal reciprocal functions. Okay, so looking at the next one, tangent squared alpha equals secant alpha, cosecant alpha, tangent alpha minus 1. Again, this would be our more complicated side. So secant is 1 over the cosine of alpha. Cosecant is 1 over the sine of alpha. Tangent is sine of alpha over cosine of alpha minus 1. So hopefully you can see we've got a sign on the top and the bottom. So that leaves me with 1 over the cosine squared. And 1 over the cosine is the secant squared of alpha minus 1. And again, going back to our Pythagorean identities, if I take secant squared and subtract 1, I'm left with tangent squared. And we're done with that. Okay, another type of problem or another strategy to look at when you're trying to uh, simplify or verify your identities. Multiple fractions, different denominators, you got to get a common denominator to reduce the expression to one fraction. So, again, this is our more complicated side. So, I'm going to get a common denominator and hopefully you can see one plus sine, one minus sine. We're building on that a plus b times a minus b, because when we multiply them together, we get a squared minus b squared. So, 
I have to multiply this one, this side, or this fraction, excuse me, by 1 minus the sine of alpha over 1 minus the sine of alpha. This one will be multiplied by 1 plus the sine of alpha over 1 plus the sine of alpha. So what do I get? Uh, I'm multiplying the tops, okay? I know that my bottom is going to be that times that, which is using this uh, basic premise here. So we have, that's going to end up being 1 minus sine squared alpha on the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. So cosine times 1 gives me cosine of alpha minus cosine alpha sine alpha plus cosine of alpha and then plus cosine alpha sine alpha. Notice that this complicated looking thing cancels out because one is negative and one is positive, leaving me on the top with cosine plus cosine which is 2 cosine alpha and on the bottom 1 minus sine squared from our trig identities we just looked at is cosine squared alpha. So hopefully you've got that if I've got 1 on the top, 2 on the bottom, I'm left with 2 over the cosine and 2 over the cosine is 2 secant alpha over, I mean, excuse me, equal to 2 secant alpha. And we are done with that problem. All right, let's look at the next one. Another strategy that we have is to remember, kind of like what we were just doing, okay? You're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate and apply the Pythagorean identity, okay? So <clears throat> keep in mind also, it does not matter which side you work down, but you can only work down one side because the thing that allows us to maneuver things is the fact knowing that they're equal and we do not know that they're equal yet we're trying to verify that they're equal so I am going to multiply this side by the conjugate which would be the secant of x minus 1 <clears throat> over the secant of x minus 1 on top I'm going to have the secant of x times the tangent of x minus 1, and on bottom I'm going to have uh, secant squared x minus 1. Okay, uh, this is going to give me, I'm going to change that to secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared, as we just seen, and then I'm going to write it over each of them. I'm going to separate it. Sometimes people think it's easier to bring this together. I'm going to show you how to separate just like you've done with fractions in the past. So that gives me secant of x tangent of x over the denominator, which I made a substitution, and then 1 over my denominator. Okay, I don't have my students here checking my work here. Secant, uh, this up here, tangent times secant minus 1 is tangent times secant minus, I put 1, that should have been a tangent, which then of course makes this a tangent. Okay, so as we continue, we have um, tangent of x on the top and 2 on the bottom, which leaving me with secant over tangent, not quite sure how that comes out, so I'm going to show you. Secant is 1 over the cosine of x, tangent on the bottom means I flip it, which makes the cosine over sine of x, and 1 on the top and 2 on the bottom leaves me with 1 over the tangent of x. I left that one like this because I'm working towards cotangent, so hopefully you can see from there, okay, my cosines cancel, 1 over the sine is cosecant, not alpha. Uh, cosecant of x, and 1 over the tangent is cotangent of x, which is what I have on the other side. These are these types of problems that you can 
it again it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together as many times as you uh, work it I've done a lot of erasing in my past so you might have to do so as well okay another type that we might see is if you see lots of powers anything exponents think about factoring okay so when I look at this again this is the more complicated side I have just a secant squared so I'm gonna look over here and see I have one plus sign which means I have two terms I have a tangent squared and a tangent squared I have a cosecant squared and a cosecant squared in both of them so I'm gonna take that out tangent squared x cosecant squared x so I factor that out what do I have left on this first term Hopefully you can see that sine squared x. And what do I have left on the second term is cosine squared x. Okay. So you should be able to see that this is 1. That's my main Pythagorean identity. You need to write it out so we see it. Okay. Tangent times cosecant if you're not quite sure. Again, it's always better to write more than not enough. That's, that looks like an alpha. Let's take that back. Sine squared of x over cosine squared of x, because that's my tangent. Cosecant is 1 over the sine squared of x. So I have a sine squared on the top and the bottom. 1 over the cosine squared gives me secant squared x equal to secant squared x. And we're done. Okay, one more just to give you lots of examples all right in this last example <clears throat> sometimes it's helpful to work down each side of the identity separate to obtain common intermediate expressions as long as you're not adding to either side of your equation then that's an acceptable method um, when I look at this one this is secant squared secant to the fourth secant squared tangent to the fourth tangent squared um, this is one over the cosine this is sine over the cosine, which to me tells me this is the more complicated. It does not matter, again, but more importantly, you need to do it yourself because what you think and what I think may be two different things. So when I look at this one, uh, the first thought that came to mind is I have a common tangent squared x in both terms. And what am I left with here is a tangent squared x plus 1. From my Pythagorean theorem uh, identities on the first page that we talked about, tangent squared x plus 1 is, oh, well, a different color. Let's go with um, tangent squared x is equal to secant squared. Well, the other thing is tangent squared, as we talked about earlier, is the same thing as. Um, secant squared x minus 1. So if you don't know these identities, you might have that sheet next to you while you're working. It will help you see your expressions. Okay? And then when I distribute that back out, I have secant to the fourth of x minus secant to the square root of x, which of course equals secant fourth x minus secant squared x. So I didn't particularly go down both sides because I didn't need to, but as you're working examples in class and as we come across more, doesn't mean that that won't happen, so just know that it's a possibility. So those are the examples. I summarize at the bottom some strategies we've done, some of each type, so look over those. Keep them handy next to your um, page of identities. And that sums up verifying trig identities.